Jupiter is the most extreme environment NASA's ever visited. To send a spacecraft there is a little bit insane. We had to, you know, build an armored tank to go there. Juno arrived in Jupiter's orbit in 2016. As it got closer, the auroras on Jupiter became so dramatic and active that astronomers said it was like Jupiter was putting on a fireworks display for Juno's arrival, which seems apt given the sheer scale of the spacecraft. It's an enormous spacecraft, close to 70 feet in diameter as it spins around and cartwheels through space. Juno showed us more than we'd ever seen of Jupiter's auroras as they rippled over the planet's poles. The northern lights on Earth are caused by solar winds entering our atmosphere and interacting with the planet's magnetic field. Jupiter's magnetic field, also known as the magnetosphere, is 20,000 times stronger than the one here on Earth. It extends all the way back to Saturn and perhaps further and it's the biggest structure in the solar system next to the sun's magnetosphere. That's one of the reasons Jupiter's auroras are so huge. These gigantic magnetic tentacles capture particles from across the solar system, thrusting them towards the planet's poles, creating this epic light show that never dies. But this is only part of the story. As well as photographing Jupiter's dazzling displays, Juno also began mapping Jupiter's core. And that's when things got interesting. Jupiter is a gas giant. It is full of loads of gas, especially hydrogen and helium. And when hydrogen is under extreme pressure, it acts in a really weird way. It becomes liquid metal. Liquid metal, like the, at the core of Jupiter, is an ocean of liquid metallic hydrogen. And using some of Juno's findings, physicists in California tried to recreate this extraordinary phenomenon bubbling away deep inside Jupiter's core. 